This day has finally arrived. Hello everyone and welcome to Thief 2X. This is kind of a momentous occasion for me because the very first series of gameplays that I ever uploaded to YouTube was Thief 2X. Back in the day in 2009. And uh, that wasn't a let's play however, it was a no commentary type of a thing. And with pretty terrible video quality in hindsight. So this time I hope to give it a little bit or a lot more justice. And uh... You know, have a really good play. Which is a crazy thing to hope, I know it's insane. Anyways, let's just uh, begin the game and look at the opening cinematic. Finally, this day has finally arrived and I'll get to set sail on my own, with my own ship. I fought for this opportunity for so long and now I can barely believe this day is here. I feel like a little child filled with uncontrollable excitement. It'll be a long journey and I'll miss my family, I know, but I've got to do this. I have to prove my worth, not just to my family, but to myself. I'll be shipping some goods to a large city for trade. I've never been there before, but it's rumored to be full of opportunity and wealth. At least I won't have to be there alone. My cousin, Kedar, has been trading in the city for a while, and I have some cargo for him. We used to play together when we were kids. I haven't seen him in so long, but he wants me to visit his new shop. I've missed Kedar. I look forward to this challenge, and I know that whatever may lay ahead, Linjala will watch over me, and I'll enjoy every minute of my adventure, even with the dangerous waters and approaching storms. Nice. So, we are a character called Zaya. I don't think she said her name there, but we are Zaya, and she's coming to the city, and as you can see, that's the sort of story set up there. Now, the first mission's quite simple, search the dock area for Kidar, so let's just go. Don't you worry about a thing, little missy. I'll take care of your cargo until you get back. All right then, sir. So, man. <laughs> It's so awesome that I'm finally let's playing this again. I guess there's nothing in that chest. Now, some people have said uh, that maybe they're not such a huge fan of Zaya's voice. Like, maybe it's a little too bubbly or something. Maybe not quite as befitting of a thief as they might like sometimes. I don't know. I, I can kind of get that, but that's a really cool looking compass, by the way. Look at that model. I'm obviously prone to saying things in the middle of other things, yeah, but uh, that is in fact intentional. The devs have said, uh, might have been in their audio commentary, I can't really remember, but yeah, you know, Zaya's character is supposed to be quite this naive sort of uh, character who comes in the city seeking riches and opportunity and hope and, you know, whatever, that sort of thing. Well, maybe not opportunity, that makes her sound like some kind of crazy, greedy person, but no. You know, her character is what her character is in the intro video, and uh, throughout the game she does sort of, well, go through a bit of changes. I mean, that's not too much of a spoiler, is it? I mean, you know, characters do tend to grow in order for them to be characters and stuff. Now, apparently she's got this captain's log for some reason, so maybe I should read this. <clears throat> Manifest. Two greats banja fruit. 45 pounds match can extract powder. You are a dragon statue for Kadar. We'll hear more about that later. Gems and stones, Grasker, gourds, Linjala figurines, book of deeds. I guess Linjala is their sort of goddess-like thing. It's obviously kind of Egypt-like place. Captain's log, day five. It seems a bit dramatic to keep a captain's log on such a small ship, an uneventful journey, but Papa insisted. I'm excited about seeing Kadar again, and I hope the city is all he's promised. 
There were some rough winds late this afternoon from the northeast as I anticipated, but the ship is fine. The crate containing the Yuara dragon was shaken from its place in the hold and the head was broken from the statue. Kadar really needed this piece and I hate to deliver it to him in two pieces. I'm sure there are gifted artisans in this city who can repair it at a reasonable price. I won't mention it to Kadar until I've had a chance to get it repaired myself. We'll be so excited to see one another, I doubt it comes up for a few days. The sea is calm today. It's so peaceful here. I expect to reach the city tomorrow. I've brought a small collection of Linjala statues and texts in hopes there will be some way of distributing them in the city. I'm unfamiliar with their religious religions and customs, but if nothing else, people may be attracted to them because of their foreign origins. I would never seek to profit from Linjala. The goddess forbids it, but I'm sure she will be pleased that I have remembered her on this trip. So you don't seek to do it, but you do it anyway. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Basically... Let's just go and do what we're supposed to. <laughs> Kitar! There you are! Hey, I was just on my way down to the docks. You're early. I've missed you. It just isn't the same at home. Huh. I've missed you too, Sayer. I just go by Zaya now. I'm not a kid anymore. Come on, I'll take you back to my shop. I think you're really gonna like the city, Zaya. It's full of promise. You'll see. I can't wait to see. Alright, so follow him back to the shop. <clears throat> Since it's raining... <coughs> pardon. I better stay close because rain is dangerous. And they're gonna carry on a little chat here, but first I guess I'd better pick up a partial map of the city, so... That's... That's very, very, very partial. You might, uh, you might understand, but, yeah, this whole, this whole place is very cool, cool architecture here. I mean, this f set of fan missions, I could just say so much about this stuff. Oh, wait a minute, 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 what does it say, what does it say? OCD, 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 Pier 13, oh, okay, great. Anyway, <laughs> very, very, very awesome, talented people. Oh. Hey, where did you go? Come on, stay with me. Never heard that before. It's because I never ran back there before. Anyways, I'll let them talk when they talk, but uh, you'll notice, yeah, you'll notice Stay the light gem doesn't work. This is, this is intentional. A lot of people thought that this was a bug, but it's intentional because you're not it a thief. It may be pouring out here, but the city doesn't look as dangerous as I've heard. These streets are deserted. Uh, well, you're I guess most of the city's not too bad. Except for the poor section over to the west. There are some places there not even the city watch will go. Still, I wouldn't go out by yourself. The city's no place for a stranger. Especially at a time like this. Yeah. Because she's not a she's not a thief. She doesn't have thiefy training or or anything. She doesn't know how to hide in the shadows. That's why your light gem doesn't work, because she's not a professional. Yet. Spoiler! In this game, you become a thief? Oh, <laughs> I know. It's crazy. Anyway, no cutting here, because they carry on talking and stuff. But, you can see, I mean, this is with stock textures, by the way. There's no texture upgrades being used here. Stock textures, stock lighting, just new dark widescreen and whatever. But, I mean, this looks very good. I mean, this came out in 2005. Version 1.1 was 2008, but they didn't change anything major. They just sort of fixed some bugs and things. But yeah, this is very, very, very good. Have to tell me all about your trip when we get back, Saya. Looking. It's been so long since I've seen anyone from the family. Stuff. Yeah. I sure hope this weather lets up soon. So, <laughs> I remember in my uh, in my first play of this, I think I may have been the first to put up a play of Thief 2X on YouTube, that was in 2009, and I was definitely the first that I could tell to be able to get a recording that captured no the books. The shop's not too far from here. And the menus and the readables, because back then DD Fix didn't allow you to do that and there wasn't any new dark or anything, and it was the craziest setup ever. I can't remember the last time a morning looked this dark. And the quality, the visual quality suffered, but I was quite proud of myself and, uh, yeah. You know, just a couple streets over to the west of where we are right now, I had a friend tell me he saw a ghost. Really? Would you believe it? Some just of the old buildings over there are supposed to be haunted. It goes to show how far tech has come in the thief world that we can all now just record like it was no thing. It's pretty awesome. 
What's going on here? Hey, why are the day gates closed? What's going on here? Hey, we got a thief. Uh oh. What? Uh oh. What's going on now? Flee the thugs and escape with their life. Find a safe place to hide and you can figure out what's going on. Oh my god, don't touch Kedar! No! Not my cousin Kedar! You're gonna pay for the- oh crap. Well, they're gonna attack- uh oh. No, 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 don't- oh, don't- uh, I hate those guys because they have good aim. How dare AIs have good aim, right? Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, by the way, there is... There is a, uh... Oh, hey. There... There's an audio commentary for Thief 2X by two of the developers, uh, Rain and Fett, I think. Yeah, and uh, it's very interesting if you're into this Thief 2X, you can... I get... I can't remember where to get it, it's probably on their website, Thief 2X. Google it or something, and you can download this package with uh, with them playing through the whole game and commentating. So if you don't like... Yeah, they have my ship. So if you don't like me commentating in my manner, I don't know why you wouldn't, because I'm obviously the greatest commentator in the world, and you go look at their... thing. Uh-oh. Uh, maybe this isn't such a good idea. <laughs> Indeed. I'll make certain she doesn't leave from the windows. <laughs> the windows? I don't think they mentioned anything about the windows, but yeah. Zombies? Oh my god. Well, I haven't found a safe place. I guess this place is very unsafe. For some reason, this screen is all cracked. I say screen because it's a screen or something. <laughs> yeah, this house is pretty creepy. Now, what was I going to say about thing? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this isn't actually... A real zombie. Spoiler alert. Um, let me just read this here. Oh, it's a map. Great. Awesome. I have a map of the house. Now, there's a lot of... There's some things that I think I missed in my original play. Uh, secrets, maybe. Pretty sure I didn't get full loot. Look at that torch flickering there. <laughs> That's awesome. This is so well done. Uh, I love... I freaking love this. Man. Yeah. So... Given that this is an entirely a fan work that was made, I think, between 2000 and 2005, and, you know, there's... a lot of this is really amazing. Overall, it's amazing, but there are going to be, inevitably, a few things about it that are a little rough. I mean, the voices... There are tons and tons of voices. Amazing amount of voice acting. All the guards and peasants and everything are completely all new. Their entire voice sets. All these characters... And who knows how long ago these were recorded. I mean, if, if they were recorded, like, in the early 2000s, you know, mic quality wasn't what it is now. So, there's going to be some slightly iffy voice acting, some slightly iffy mic quality, but, you know, it's not too prevalent. And overall, it's pretty great. And you just have to forgive a few of the things here, given that this is a work done by people who also had day jobs and, you know, didn't necessarily have amazing equipment for certain things and stuff. So, you know, you just... You know, just just saying, there's going to be a few bits which might cause us to snicker, and you know, that's that's fine. But uh, I I don't think any less of this whole campaign for that. Yeah. So now that I'm done talking and babbling about that, I suppose I should be remembering where all the s secrets are in this mansion or something. Ah, oh, yes, the thief world where you can go anywhere at any time that you want. So sometimes you might go to a place before having read about it. That's, that's pretty cool. However, you can sort of stand on this, and then I think you can sort of stand on another thing. I think maybe you're supposed to put two heavy things on here, but you can just stand on them, so I don't know. Maybe not. Anyways, that's, that's one secret. So it's a healing oil, which is like a healing potion, and when you drink it, she goes like this. It's pretty cute and adorable. Anyways, yes, Zaya is, of course, voiced by Wynne, who also did, um, what's-her-face in, uh... 
What's the mission? <laughs> the seventh crystal. She did Lady... Whatever in the... Seventh crystal. I can't even remember names now. It's quite embarrassing. But yeah. She's got a... What? <laughs> I heard somebody tapping their feet. <sighs> yeah, she's got quite good voice acting. So they did pick a pretty good crew for this game. I gotta tell ya. And stuff. And yeah. That one, you gotta open it somehow. I know it's like amazing. I didn't know that I had to ever open a door somehow. I thought I had to open it. No, how? Let's see. I think this is... Oh, yeah! One of the cool things they did is that those books animate opening. So good, man. Fairy lyrics from the notes of unknown adventurer. She that pinches country wenches, if they rub not clean their benches, and with sharper nails remembers when they rake not up their embers. But wist I of a woman bold who thrice my brows dost sign, I might regain my mortal mould as fair a form as thine. At morning and at evening both you merry were and glad, so little care of sleep and sloth these pretty ladies had. When Tom came home from labour, or sister milking rose, then merrily, merrily went their tabor and nimbly went their toes. His belt was made of myrtle leaves, plated in small, curious thieves, beset with amber cowslip sluds, and fringed about with daisy buds. The trickster came and went did he, and all the folks did quickly flee, where once the house of dancing was, now stood a tree and bees a buzz. Very good meter. Most people can't write a poem, but uh, these people obviously do. <laughs> Can do. Hmm. Spells for fixing things how you want them to be. By Richalia. Page 3. For a person who has a lot of greed in him, I have just the thing. 1. Obtain a lock of hair of the person and place it in a purple silken bag. 2. Get a bit of goat's milk. 3. Find a piece of paper and a pen. 4. Put the milk into the bag and leave it sit for three days. It should stink like a burrock's last meal and the milk will have dried up. 5. Write on the note, DON'T BE GREEDY, YOU UGLY OLD CUR! And tie this to the bag. Six. Drop the bag in front of the offender's house. He will pick it up and be so afeard of the bag with his own hair that he will stop being greedy. <laughs> I also gotta say the writing in this game is amazing. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, this is like Natalie's helpful advice here. 63. Here's one to make friends and influence them. 1. Obtain one bright green frog. 2. Purchase the most wonderful influencing powder from me for 12 gold pieces. 3. I will give you the rest of the spell once you have purchased the powder. <laughs> hmm. Notes of Adventurer by Anonymous. Book 1. An excellent way to get a fairy to be bound with you, but for myself I have another way. Get of the woods two things, a cup of dew and a branch of oak with leaves that are green. Bring these to a wood in moonlight, but it should have only a half moon to it. Next, find a circle of toadstools. And after the great fire which purified the land, there arose a people who were of a place not of anything we know. Their hair did billow out like great sails, and their skin shone with a high glimmer. Their eyes were pale and sad, for they had fled their own land which was dying. They did practice magics which were new to this place, magics which brought up new trees and carved out the mountains and hills to their liking. They called themselves the children of Danu, who was their mother and protector. There are two accounts of how they came to arrive here, and one is that they sailed on a ship in the air, another that they walked on the mists across the ocean, a long journey that they soon met with resistance when... One of the most amazing discoveries in his journey was a type of food called choc olette by the natives. It remains difficult to procure, though I have found myself pining for it of late. Oh, that choc olette, it sure is addictive. I think I remember... Yeah, this book is one of the weird books where you have to be leaning in to frob it. And they still didn't fix that at 1.1. It's kind of weird. It's actually, like, freaking almost impossible to actually read this book. It's kind of, like, seriously, it's actually kind of stupid. Like, what? I and then when you do click, you unclick because it's no. I'm gonna film this entire thing. Nope, nope. I'm I'm a yeah. There we go. Okay, <laughs> my dearest sister, what's with that thing? That I write to you, this to you on the hopes that you might have a suggestion. It seems as though my husband is acting quite peculiar of late. I caught him watching me in the mirror last eve as I brushed my hair. His look was not one of affection. It was instead as though he were spying on me. My skin became chill as this at this. I do not know who else to speak with about this. He seemed quite normal when I married him, yet 
There is now something amiss. He recently started to build an addition to the basement and spends hours there overseeing its preparation. When I asked him about it, he glared at me and stepped away. I know you are friends with Brother Lorat. Perhaps you might speak with him. My husband dislikes the hammers, so we do not approach them with such matters. With all my love, your sister. I'm probably the only dude who's ever put up a, a video to actually read that because I'm the only guy with patience to... Oh, yeah, well, whatever. Anyways, there you go. That's that amazing book that uh, that you can read if you're like, Oh, hey, here's another one. This is a library, and there's books. I know it's crazy, and I think there's a secret book that opens that door in the hallway. But first... Hmm... This is rather long. Excerpts from... I'm obviously going to read it anyway. Excerpts from Ruland's Life and History Notebook. Chapter 4. Because of my reputation as a swift note-taker, and as one who is deeply intrigued by matters of history, I was given the opportunity to be witness to a special interrogation by the Hammerites. Upon that day, they had captured a young acolyte of a group known as the Hand Brotherhood. I had heard of this brotherhood and had seen two I believed to be these strange mages, but I had never spoken directly to one before. As it was, this acolyte did not speak with the strange echo that pervades the voices of the mages, even apparent if they are in a small room, so it was my belief that he was a mere apprentice of some sort. He was caught trying to sneak into a hammer library, but opened the wrong door at the wrong time. Two hours later, I arrived and Father Doran proceeded to question the apprentice. At first he would not speak, but his tongue loosened a bit when we when one of the hammers brought in a pot of boiling water. <laughs> the mere sight sent him into fits, but he soon calmed himself and revealed his allegiance to the Hand Brotherhood. His eyes were dark, as was his hair, and though youthful, he held a permanent scowl as he glared at the Hammerites and myself. He revealed that he went to the library of his own accord, that he might acquire a few books and return, thereby impressing his teachers. Both Father Doran and myself doubted this claim. Little as we knew of the Brotherhood, we were certain they would be unimpressed with petty thievery. Soon, the head Hammerite interrogator came into the room with what can only be described as instruments of torture. At first, he poked and prodded the young mage who still refused to speak. Then, and I had to gather, and I had to look away at this, greater measures were taken. I watched Father Doran, who did flinch more than once. He even closed his eyes for a few moments, his expression pained. Finally, the boy spoke the truth. He was cast out from the Brotherhood for attempting to gain forbidden knowledge, and he hoped he might find that knowledge in the Hammerite Library to use against his former teachers. Sad thing, that. I left before I found out his name, but he was sentenced to jail for a while, and then was to be turned over to the mages. I do not know if this ever occurred. Chapter 2 Oh, Chapter 11. <laughs> Yeah. As it stands, it is entirely possible that the modern-day mages descended from those pre-precursors, but I have no proof of this. The precursor artifacts that I have seen point to a society far too different to be the ancestor of what is now the Hand Brotherhood. Not only that, but the mages come from far beyond the East Shore. My attempts to speak with a member of the Brotherhood have been thwarted at every turn. Not only don't they like visitors, they also shun those with any serious questions. A pity. Of course, the strangest thing was that their skin shone a bright green. Their hair flowed out around them, and I felt as though I might fall under their spell. Far away though I was, I couldn't help but stare, and it seemed as though I was growing nearer to them, despite the fact that my feet were firmly planted on the ground. They were beautiful, these strange women. At last their glowing yellow eyes caught sight of me, and I tensed. Their hair rose about them, and I turned, running like the coward that I am. Who knows what tortures I might have had were I captured? I think about this often. Despite those things, I am still considered a historian. Though the pagans are interesting, there doesn't appear to be any evidence that the trickster was ever a tangible deity, or that he could somehow be reborn. It just isn't feasible. The Hammers, of course, vehemently deny this, but what am I to say? They just won't face the facts no matter how clearly presented, and I do fear that they may take my facts to be blasphemy. Still, all their training is good, even if there's no trickster to do battle with. Someone must protect the weak and innocent of the city. We certainly cannot rely on the local government to lift a finger against the criminals. How I long for a strong hand of justice to swiftly smite down the scum of the gutters! And with that, I believe I will leave it here for today. So see you guys next time for more of this awesome, awesome freaking fan-made entire full-length game, and bye for now.